It's a scene being played out at uh, schools across the country. Anti-bullying rallies are being held to uh, mark Pink Shirt Day. Kids are wearing that color to uh, take a stand against bullying and to celebrate everyone's differences. CTV's Dana Levinson reports. This is when I started experiencing stigma firsthand. Ashley Murphy spoke to a mystified crowd of young students. She was born HIV positive and was discriminated against from the get-go. Her own birth mother did not want her, but her foster parents did. Carrie Murphy adopted her, and Ashley has spent her life speaking up and speaking out about being different. Quite funny enough, I wasn't bullied by my peers so much so as adults. I wasn't invited to sleepovers. As a kid, the neighbors wouldn't let me play with their kids because of my HIV status. But it had nothing to do with the kids. It was all the parents and the lack of education. Ashley has nine siblings, seven adopted, and all have significant challenges. Our lives have been enriched far more than we've given to them. Every corner of this school and every person is wearing something pink. A reminder that it is okay to be different and not okay to be intolerant of those who are. It was not the best feeling for sure. Uh, it was mainly because like, I tried my best at all this like soccer. Mainly I wasn't the best at it. I tried my best, but I wasn't just very good. People tease me for that, but I've gotten over that. Pink Shirt Day began in Nova Scotia when two 17-year-old high school students wore pink to show support of a grade 9 boy who was bullied for wearing a pink T-shirt. Dana Levinson, CTV News. Travis Price is a co-founder of Pink Shirt Day and joins us now. Travis, thank you very much for taking the time. Thanks for having me on. Uh, what did you think of, of how this day has gone? You know, I, I think it's incredible. Uh, today in particular, you know, it's so special. I'm in Vancouver right now in uh, Victoria to see, you know, uh, the amazing support here throughout the years has been simply incredible. But to see the support internationally as well, to see how far this movement has truly spread because of one act of kindness, one random act of kindness changed the way the world looked at an issue. I think it's so special that I get to be part of it still. Um, as one of its co-founders, you know, I, I think that... Uh, this, this movement found me at the right time. It gave me purpose and passion in life, and I'm just so fortunate. Uh, Travis, uh, what made you decide to, to start this? Uh, the truth is, you know, I knew all too well what it was like to be the bullied kid. Uh, growing up, uh, I was quite severely bullied throughout my whole life. So when I seen this student being bullied, I seen myself in him. I knew that feeling of loneliness and sadness, and I wanted to be able to make a difference for him so he wouldn't go through the same things that I did. Uh, I didn't know how to do it at the time, and myself and David Shepard, the other co-founder, it took us a little bit to figure it out. But once we did decide to wear pink and stand up for him, we were able to try to activate our school. Luckily, our school got behind us, and we were able to create this, this amazing movement. You know, so often these uh, kind of uh, gestures are about the one-on-one. -on -one. When you go to a school and talk to groups of students, uh, when you approach one person, what do they say about the, the challenge of, of their situation today? Well, you know, I think it's a perfect example. You know, I'm, I'm here right now, actually, in Reynolds Secondary in Victoria. And I think it's just so incredible that these kids are able to come up and talk to me, and they're able to feel hope. They're able to understand that, you know, tomorrow can be better because of what we were just able to do here. And the reason I'm able to deliver that message so strongly is because of the Canadian Red Cross. They have me trained in bullying prevention education, which is the most important thing to me. Research shows that bullying will go away when we're able to really relate to our kids in bullying prevention education. So part of me being here in BC this week is to generate funds, generate, uh, you know, uh, some, some uh, sponsorship opportunities so that we can get kids trained in school coast to coast to coast. I want to make sure that Pink Shirt Day continues to be the thing that helps fund bullying prevention education. How do you measure something like this? How do you know when you've made a difference? You know, uh, that's one of the hardest things and most challenging things for me. You know, uh, to be honest, when I was younger, uh, people would try to get me to measure it in life and death. And uh, they would say, we still have these tragedies, Travis. Like, what are, you, what are you doing to prevent it? And I became angry. I became upset because maybe I needed to do more. The truth of the matter is, I look at it as every day I want to do the exact same thing me and David were able to do that day. I want to help one person. So when I just spoke in the school here today... A girl came up to me right after the presentation, hugged me and said, thank you for sharing your story. I think my life will be better. To me, that's what I need. That's how I measure my success. Every time I open my mouth, every time I speak, I want to speak with purpose. I want to speak with positive messaging and I want to make a difference to a student just like that. Travis, bullying has uh, been going on for uh, so long. Uh, social media has definitely changed it. What have you noticed about uh, the ways that social media has uh, impacted 
Absolutely. You know, social media has changed the way we need to address bullying. Uh, Cyberbullying is very real and it's 24 seven. So a student no longer just goes to school and then comes home and is kind of in a safe place. They go home, they look at their cell phone, they see negative comments about themselves. They might see negative pictures about them. Um, It truly has changed. But the thing is, when we continue to educate, when we continue to train these kids in bullying prevention, when the Red Cross Beyond the Hurt program, we see that, you know, we can address bullying in the same way. It's not about changing how we get kids to necessarily, you know, obviously we want them to use Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and stuff in a positive way. But at the end of the day, we want to create a better person. We want to make sure that we teach empathy, that we understand that we get to teach kids that what they do online is also just as important as what is face-to-face. We'll let you get back to those students there. Travis Price, co-founder of uh, Pink Shirt Day. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thanks so much for having me on, guys.